Hi, y'all. Welcome. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. Senator Bill Cassidy joins us. Senator Cassidy, real, real quick, I know you had some other things to talk about. Uh, I know you voted against a $1.34 trillion uh, omnibus bill, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, why? And I know you voted against that. Now, you voted for one before, and you voted against this one. In your mind, what was the difference? The one before actually had some things that went against Obamacare, things that we otherwise could not have achieved, and that made it worse. worse. Uh, this one was $1.3 trillion negotiated by four people out of the eyesight of everybody. Uh, we were given less than 24 hours to read a 2,200-page bill. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. And, um, uh, and it's just not the way to do business. Yeah, I was just, I was disappointed. I was hoping the president would kill it. Uh, I, I, I don't, you know, his poll numbers don't show that he hurt himself on the bill. Uh, it was just that, uh, I, you know, we'd just like to see some of the spending stop one day, one day. And I leave it with this Senator one day, it's going to catch up with the country and, uh, printing of money and, and, and running up debt does catch up with you one day. I don't know the date. But I feel like one day it will. And we had 21 trillion. Obama ran up 10 trillion. So if you look at presidents that's running them up, even though I know the House and Senate vote on it, uh, one day this guy to crush us. I believe that. Well, we, we, the, the way to get out of it typically is going to be growth. We think that the Tax Cut and Jobs Act bill will increase growth critically, already growing at about the rate that we did under the Obama years. Now, growth covers a multitude of sins. On the other hand, this could be the greatest bill in the world, but it's 2,200 pages, and we had less than 24 hours to study it. That's just not the way to do business. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, on the other hand, I'm also working on the other other hand. Uh, we, we're breaking some in. As you probably saw, we just got my ego act signed into law. Uh, the Eliminate Government Oil Paintings. We've been doing it on a year-year basis, but to finally we got it made permanent law. A federal agency can't spend twenty to fifty thousand dollars a year for a portrait of one of their past secretaries that they then hang up in the back some some back hall that no one has seen. That's at least a minor victory for the taxpayer. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, opioids or opioid crisis is a big deal. I know you introduced several pieces of legislation to com combat this. What are they? What are you trying to do there? Several things. Everybody listening to this show was of somebody affected by drug addiction and possibly even dying from opioids. We're doing several things. One, trying to make money available for treatment, evaluate those programs to make sure they work, increase the penalties on the drug dealers that are bringing in fentanyl, which is more deadly than even heroin. Uh, and we're also trying to educate physicians to make sure they don't overprescribe. Uh, there's some docs who either do it criminally, uh, very but some, and there's a few others that don't do it criminally, but they just give more prescriptions than are needed. And we're trying to also cut back on that. You know, we did. We, we talked about this on the program several times. There were people that called in and said they needed a certain amount of drugs each day because of the, the pain they were in. I, I guess you're not really talking about a focusing on those folks. You're just talking about the overprescription period. Totally. A friend of mine who uh, works in the VA and you'll say, oh, absolutely, there's some folks, they need it, we understand it, we're trying to help them. But there's other folks who come in and they want a, uh, a month supply, 120 pills, but you do a, a urine drug screen and they don't have any opioids in their urine, which means they're not taking it. What they're doing wow. is they're selling the medicine. And that's not a good thing, not good for the patient, not good for getting things out on the street for others to take. And not good for the taxpayers since the taxpayer is subsidizing the cost of that prescription. Well, Senator Cassidy, when you when you when you talk about an incident like that, it, it, can you take a blood test every time you you get an order of them? Is that is so that doable only, or possible? Or is that a little bit overboard? Oh no, there's um, the folks that are monitoring patients. That's one thing. If you have a patient who's got cancer and he's got prostate cancer and he's got metastasis to his bones. He's got pain. Mm -hmm. You know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, if you, if a pharmacist looks on his database, and there are these databases, and says, hmm, the same patient has gotten four different prescriptions from four different doctors in the last three weeks, each of which is a month's supply, maybe we need to investigate further. And there are some folks that are doctor shopping 
uh, getting as many prescriptions as they can and either abusing or selling the medicine. And we just need to stop that, man. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, 844-766-6607, Hickson has a hotline uh, if you want to be part of the program. What about, uh, you know, all the school shootings? Uh, everybody knows we want to beef the security up at our schools. Um, forget David Hogg and all that craziness that they're doing in the press, but 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 there are there's a legitimate concern at schools. I send kids to school to a school every day. I I, I kind of don't think about it to be honest with you. I'm hoping the school is doing what they're supposed to do. But what's going to end up happening? Will they be funding out there to help secure our schools? What do you think should happen? Yeah, there's no one answer, but there's lots of things. If you do it right, make things better. We can look at the shooting in Florida. The FBI blew it. The sheriff's department blew it. The mental health department blew it. Yep. The school board blew it. Yep. Uh, any one of those folks, if they had done something just a little differently, the kid would have been recognized as having incredible problems uh, and had been reported to the appropriate database, which would have, which would have kept him from legally buying a gun. And on at least four different levels, that was lost. We're trying to strengthen all four of those, uh, make it so that if a school asks a child to leave because he's troubled, that they would pass that child off to a mental health professional that would actually evaluate as opposed to what happened in Florida. Um, trying to increase the coordination between law enforcement, mental health, and schools. Again, if a child's asked to leave, then law enforcement will be aware of the reason why. He's a troublemaker. He's always causing fights. He's got caught with a weapon on the campus. Uh, um, we, 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 we can do that. Trying to harden the schools. Adam Lanza, I'm told that when he went into Connecticut and shot up Sandy Hook, he couldn't get through the door, so he shot through the window. Uh, on the other hand, this guy in Florida, I'm also told, went to the second floor and tried to shoot through the window to the playground, and he couldn't get through because the window was bulletproof. Well, man, if we'd had that bulletproof window in Connecticut, Adam Lanza couldn't have entered the school. Mm -hmm. So putting money out there for school systems to upgrade their facilities to kind of prevent this tragedy. But don't you think that what is what is wrong with arming some people at the schools? I'm just kind of curious. Somebody said arming teachers. I don't care if it's teachers, custodians. If they are armed, they can handle a gun, they're trained. You have a training system. You have a school with 1,200 students, and you got about 40 people on campus with a gun. I heard one nut out of uh, Monroe say that, well, we worried about a teacher shooting a student. Well, I'm worried about That's fine if we have an accident. They have accidents in vehicles every day. But allowing somebody to go in and kill 10, 20, 30 students, my God, I think the risk is worth it. So, Moon, uh, a week or two after the shooting in Florida, kid in Maryland steals his father's pistol, goes to a school, starts shooting folks, and a resource, a resource officer there or someone trained with a weapon took him out, prevented a greater tragedy. Yep. It was kind of proof of concept. But by the way, by the way, Senator, you don't, you don't, you don't see those stories in the mainstream media at all. They don't put them. They don't praise them. They don't. They don't. They ought to be showing that every day. They don't do that. Well, it's a little bit like the situation in Texas where the guy gets kicked out of the Air Force. He beat up his wife. The Air Force didn't report it. He buys a weapon, shoots up a church, and the guy next door hears it, comes over with his weapon, and stops a greater tragedy. I remember uh, that. I so remember that. those things aren't reported. But clearly, when you got 300 million weapons in the United States, you're not going to get rid of them. So it's better to have a mechanism to address when something bad happens than to pretend that something bad is not going to happen. Well, but, but you have, do you have a problem with almond? I'm saying teachers are some people on campus. Do you have a problem with as that? As long as it's voluntary and as long as they have the ability and the training, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Now, and now look, again, the, that, that, the training and all that's going to be part of it. The coordinating it with not only the school, but how about having a school that's coordinated with the sheriff's department or, or, or police department saying, hey, here's what we got. Here's what we're going to do. You have meetings. You get planned. You plan it. You let people know you're doing it, too. That way, if uh, one of these psycho, sicko jobs come in there, they're not going to look for the place they know they're going to they're have a resistance. They're going to look for a place they have no resistance. I remember uh, about 20, 30 years ago, I went to Little Rock, Arkansas. And they were having uh, an outbreak of robberies of, like, convenience stores. And the sheriff, he was kind of a Buford Pusser type guy. He gets on TV, runs a commercial. He says, um, I'm your sheriff. I'm holding this shotgun. 
and I'm going to spend the night in a different convenience store every night, and you won't know which one it is. But if that's the one you knock over, that's the one you get shot in. Mm -hmm. And all the convenience store robberies went down. So there is a deterrence when people think that there's a consequence of doing something wrong. Dr. Bill Cassidy is my special guest of the great state of Louisiana. Hey, Bill, real quick, uh, we'll take a couple of calls for you, but uh, Paul Ryan has been rumored to be leaving in the House, okay? Any word on McConnell? A lot of people are really disappointed in the Senate president. I mean, we just, his leadership. Maybe you're tight with him, maybe you're not, I don't know, but any any change coming in the Senate? I mean, because there's a lot of us that have been real disappointed in his, in his leadership, be honest with you. I thought when Trump came in, we'd do a change there, but we didn't. So, And I don't know how tight you are with him or not. I'm just kind of curious. Any word that will change the Senate president, the head of the Senate? I don't think so. We're only, uh, I mean, the election is going to be, uh, the midterm election is going to be in November. And right now it's going to be all political. And increasingly it's going to be difficult to get anything through that's, uh, legislative nature and probably there's not going to be a change between then and now now i thought that in alabama obviously steve bannon was making mcconnell an issue but then roy moore ended up being the candidate and that just kind of imploded mm-hmm. so and steve bannon's now off the scene so maybe people make it an issue and if it is uh you know there'll be some pressure on mitch uh, step aside or for folks to declare against him but until you know who's running, you don't know who you're voting for. Yeah. yeah. Just kind of curious if something would happen there. All right. Uh, hey, guys, on the calls, I want you all to go straight to your questions because we, we don't have much time left. Uh, let's go to Randy in Shreveport. Question or comment for uh, Senator Bill Cassidy. Andrew in Shreveport. I'm, go ahead, Andrew. Hey, there. Oh, no worries, Moon. I uh, hope you're doing well. Just say I, I had the chance to meet you when you were in Shreveport at Strawn's with American Ground. But I just wanted to uh, – I want to commend uh, Senator Cassidy for voting against the just terrible ominous spending bill because we really cannot be fiscal conservatives when it fits our narrative. We we have to be fiscal conservatives all the time, and I just wanted to just commend Senator Cassidy on that. I had the chance to meet him yesterday and ask him a question about that. And uh, so I don't really have any questions, but I just want to say how important that is because with the midterms coming up, that 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 bill did not do any, didn't do the Republican Party any pleasures. So uh, that's what I wanted to say, and I just appreciate the call. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it. That's, uh... hey, thanks, Andrew. I totally agree with you, man. We can't be for balancing the budget when Obama's president, not when it's somebody else. Yep. All um, right. It's not, it's not fair to the next generation or the next. Totally with you, man. Thank right. you. Randy in Shreveport, question and comment for Senator Cassidy. Hey, hey yes, sir. Uh, thank you for taking my call and not uh, put me on call block. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I, I was kind of worried about you when I voted for you, but it seems like you're doing a pretty good job. And uh, in this uh, situation uh, with these no-gun zones in the schools, just what year did that get started? And I think people need to connect the dots of what administration that was in. And I'm thinking Clinton administration. I think all this stuff's orchestrated on these shootings, especially that one down in Florida, because they let that guy slide so many times it was unreal. Uh, thank you for your time, time, comment. Okay, bye. Yeah, right. I, I don't know for sure, but I also tend to think that it was a no-gun no, the no gun zone started in, uh, in, in Clinton's years. Uh, on the other hand, what we saw in Maryland, like we spoke of earlier, you had a fellow on the campus who knew how to use a gun, when a troubled student came in and started shooting, this fellow stopped a greater tragedy. So you can actually do something positive if you have somebody who's trained to protect. I agree with you totally, Randy. Uh, 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 Senator Cassidy, when it comes on a, on a school shootings and things of that nature, how much of this is going to be handled by the local uh, uh, locals more than it will be federal? And what's federal's response to this, just helping them with money? Um, good question. Um, obviously, if you've got a strapped school system and many school systems are strapped and you want them to harden the school, it helps to have federal dollars come down to help that school harden. That's one of the things we just did. The reporting system where that kid, ideally after the 30th time the sheriff's department visited him, he would have been put in the database to indicate that he was he would have been adjudicated and a judge would have said, listen, you're troubled, you should not be able to legally buy a weapon. That would have been a good thing. 
And the federal government manages that database so that if a kid in Mississippi moves over into Arkansas or Louisiana, um, you can track that across state lines. And so there is a federal role, but a lot of it is local and state leadership. Um, as with everything, Moon, we can't look to Washington, D.C. for the answers. It's local and state leadership that has to set up the system where if a kid is troubled, law enforcement's notified, the mental health folks are notified, and the school coordinates with them, and that comes down to your school board. Yeah, I, yeah, I was I was thinking it was going to be more of a local issue, too. I don't think you need as much money if you have the communication with the local sheriffs and the police departments to go into the schools and allow teachers and people to carry. I just think that's going to be the answer, and it saves on money. But number two is if you got people that are trained, I think you'll be able to handle it. All right, we got to go. Senator Cassidy, thanks. We'll do it again later. Hey, thank you very much. See you, man. All right, got to go, folks. We'll be back. A lot more to go. Don't go nowhere.